Well, hello. Um, I hope you can hear me. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Bradley Wells. Um, I'm the Head of Academic Scholarship at Malvern College and welcome to this webinar on scholarships at Malvern. Now, I understand the technology is such that you can hear and see me. Hopefully that's true, uh, uh, but I can't hear you. So, you know, if you're yelling at the screen, that's terrific, um, but I won't see that. Um, apparently, if you want to, if you'd like to ask a question, uh, just pop it in the Q&A uh, box and I'll be answering those at the end. But yeah, I, I have no audio for you, but hopefully you can hear me. And it's very strange talking to a, an empty screen, but I hope you're well. And uh, no doubt you're, you're here tonight because you're interested in an academic scholarship at the 13 plus level. And I've, you've just sat through a session of general information about applications. And my role here is to give you some specific information about principally the day, the actual application day when you come in for the, the testing, et cetera, on those two days. And uh, I can give you an insight into that. And also my role at the college is to run the scholarship program for all pupils, right from when they enter in the FY, right through to the upper six, and as they leave the college, and also as they enter. In fact, some of you may be looking and thinking, I recognize that strange fellow in the, in the video, because I may have been to your prep school or your school to visit uh, before now to give you some information as well. And um, many people, many of you may, if you are lucky enough to come to Morven, and I hope you do, uh, will have dealings with me in different capacities, even right through. I, only today I was chasing up some Oxbridge applicants, those pupils in our upper six who are hopefully wanting to get into Oxford and Cambridge um, in this very important next couple of weeks. So yeah, anything academic and scholarship, um, I might be the person to help you. But I know you're probably more interested in, in how to get here than how to achieve one of those, those scholarships. Uh, so to give you just a brief insight into that, um, if you do apply and uh, you come along on those two days, um, I'm sure you've been briefed on this about the fact that you'll have to sit a series of papers, that's true. Uh, there are a series of um, test papers. Uh, there's the core ones, English, Maths and Science, and then you'll choose one from each of the two option columns. Uh, again, if you'd be, I'm not sure how familiar you are, this is all available on our, our handbook. But in option A, you choose either geography, Latin, Greek, or theology, philosophy, religion. And then for option B, you choose one from either history, French, German, and Spanish. So when you pick one from each of those, you'll sit those papers as well. So you'll see we've at Morven, we've made our scholarship program a lot more bespoke in the last year or so. And that's to, I guess, cut back some of that examination. Um, still very important to do well and to do the best you can in, in your options as well. But the other thing we're doing on the day, which is fairly unique, is that we'll also be giving you some challenges, some fun challenges on over those two days to see how well your, your more generic skills are and to see what kind of person you are, what kind of thinker you are. Because really at the end of the day, what we're interested in here um, is you and giving you the opportunity to be your best. So we're not prescriptive in that sense, quite the opposite. We just want to give you an opportunity to shine. Uh, and to, to show what you're capable of and show us your interests. So again, while the exam papers are important, um, it will be those activities and those skills that we have as well. And of course, uh, the interview. Uh, on those days, you'll have an opportunity to be interviewed by one of the senior academic staff. And uh, just a heads up on that, uh, I often get asked about what should we do? How can we prepare for those interviews and for those days? And my advice is always probably don't. Uh, in one sense, we want you to be yourself. We really want you to be um, who you are and just to take those questions and, and just be honest. That's really important. And often it's not even about finding the right answer. It's about how you get there and about how you think. And that's something we're really interested in. And um, so I would just say, be honest to yourself. Having said that, we do, when you get your pack of information to come and join us on those two days, you will get um, a request to come with some topic prepared just for that day. Just a very small thing to say, um, is there a topic you feel quite passionate about? Just to get you started in that interview, to make you comfortable as well. And uh, we've had some extraordinary topics, uh, everything from horses through to Aristotelian theory. So, you know, you pick whatever might be of interest to you, but we want to get a sense of you as well. So I guess at Morven, um, unlike other applications, we have sort of pulled back the examinations in some way, they're still important and you will have to sit the core and the options, but it's very much about being you and seeing who you are and seeing what you're capable of in that sense and just slightly outside the comfort zone, but giving you the opportunity to, to shine. Um, actually, um, a good example of that would be 
the program. If you come in here, Melbourne, as a scholar and um, you would enter the scholarship program, a little, it, it's really a supplementary thing, um, icing on the cake. And in that sense, again, it's not prescriptive. My role and um, our hope here at Melbourne is that if you come here and you're a scholar, that you'll be able to follow your passions. Um, and my role is to try to facilitate that. So you'll be, as a scholar, you have a combination of both um, privileges and responsibilities. The privilege, of course, is being a scholar. I guess that's fairly self-evident. But also you would be given, I guess, privileged access to some of the key events that might happen. For example, there might be a, a visiting guest academic in the senior years. Well, as a junior scholar, you'd be invited to that as well. Um, and then the responsibilities come in the form of, well, we expect you to take academic leadership in the college. Uh, and as a scholar, one of the things, uh, I guess a really good example of how that operates, those two sides of privilege and responsibility is the new mentoring program that we've introduced. And that is if you are successful in gaining a scholarship when you come to Melbourne, or if you actually get into Melbourne and subsequently get identified as a scholar, then you would be appointed a mentor. That would be a scholar from a higher year, usually the year above, and they look after you a bit more. And of course you could collaborate and partner with them in that sense. And equally, as, as you go through the years from remove onwards, you would be expected to hopefully mentor someone from a junior year. This idea of connecting across the year groups is so important with scholars as well. And we're setting up a framework for that uh, to let you fly. And, and the other thing is you would be invited to create and deliver a project of some sort. And that would be very much by negotiation. Uh, already, I've had some extraordinary ideas coming forward. I have a, a, a girl in my remove who is writing a novel. That's, that's her passion and her skill, and she's often running that. I had another chap in the lower sixth, a scholar there, who really came to me with a proposal to make a counting machine. So, I mean, I, I'm still not quite sure what that was. So I put him in the right direction, linked him up with someone who knew a bit more about it, and he's, he's following that interest. So I guess um, that gives you an idea of, I guess, where we're going with the scholarships at Morven and what you would have access to that, the wonderful program that we had in extension of your normal course studies and that idea of freedom. Uh, I think in my view, it's a creative chaos. Uh, and talking to both the parents and, and the pupils at this point, that that's exactly what we want at Morven. We want you to, to have that space, to have those wings so that you can really fly. Uh, without imposing it on you. Uh, the support's here, we're here to support you, but equally to allow you to, to do what you'd like in that sense. So that's a really brave model. Um, it gives freedom and it's a slightly sort of created chaos idea, but it's also highly supervised. And my new appointment, which only came into operation a couple of years ago, is really uh, to help facilitate that as well. So uh, there are some of the questions, uh, I suppose some of the main points about what will happen on the day on those two days, sorry, when you come in for your scholarship day, the 13 plus scholarship day. And then of course, with an eye on what is, is happening in the future uh, and what would happen once you took on, on that position, if you were lucky enough to sort of access our scholarship program. So um, questions, uh, that was a brief intro. I hope that's what most of you are after. Again, the information booklet's really helpful. But behind that booklet, it's important to get the ethos and philosophy here at Morven and where we're, we're progressing in that sense. Um, questions I often get asked, so I'm going to predict one, is um, how can you prepare for the papers and are there past papers? That's a common question we get. Um, the, the short answer is with the exam papers, the test papers, uh, yes, with the core papers, we basically follow the case papers, the academic scholarship papers, which are common across the country and most schools would do that, and I'm sure you're familiar with those papers. And they, of course, past papers uh, are, are useful. Uh, and looking at the comments there as well, they're freely available. Um, and we would do those for the core subjects. So mathematics, English, and science. So they're, they're going to be case papers as we have done in the past and as many schools would do. The option papers though, however, are bespoke for more than they've been created by us. That's a bit trickier because it will be our first lot coming through this year. Having said that, if you looked at the case papers in the subject that you're interested in, so if you are hoping to, to sit the history paper, have a look at the past case history papers and that's a good starting point. Um, and we are going to be testing similar skills. However, having said that, 
we will be posting up some examples and some sort of guidance on those bespoke option papers, um, hopefully soon. So that's something that will be coming up, but there's plenty, if you are interested in that, yes, you could look at past papers as well. So that's, that's hopefully a, a bit clearer. Again, though, I would come back to, it's really more important that we see who you are and how you think. Having marked many scholarship papers myself, um, in particular in my field of English, um, often it's a case of, okay, they've got the right answer. They've, they've studied up, they've prepared, they've practiced, but I can't really see a mind at work here. Whereas this person might not quite have jumped through the hoops as well, perhaps, but there's some real creative thinking and real original thinking that's really clear on that response. And those sorts of evidences of your, your thinking and your personality and can be very important as well. Uh, and as I mentioned before, that's how it flows into perhaps the, uh, the interview part of the day as well. All right, so now I understand the questions come in now. Oh, I have one here from someone. Thank you, my first official question. Um, how do international students join the test and interviews? That's a great question. Uh, we have many international students who are obviously present who are coming in on the day and they would obviously go through the normal process. Is there a facility for on online testing and interviews? I understand the answer is yes, is what I've been led to believe and I'm talking slightly out of my area of expertise. Anna Louise would, would know better on that front, but certainly we have done online. And in fact, even in the past, we've done online, the whole day had to be online because of COVID. So my short answer is probably yes. Um, obviously the preference would be for you to be here in person. There'd have to be a pretty exceptional reason. Obviously, if you're at the other side of the planet, I'm sure that can be arranged. Thanks for that question. I hope I've given the right answer. I'm fairly confident of that. <laughs> Oh, we've got some people putting some things in the chat column as well. That's handy. Let me have a look over here. I hope you're all very much impressed with my um, IT skills here. We've all become so expert on IT at the moment. I shouldn't say that because I'll jinx myself. Uh, yes, thank you. Oh, I've got a compliment online. Thank you very much from one of the Morgan College um, parents, by the looks of things. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, any other questions coming through at this stage? Just type them in the Q&A or even in the chat would be fine as well. Just having a look there if there's anything else. Got one here, I think. Oh, golly, okay, here we go, here we go. Um, we've got a question here. Uh, is it too late? Uh, is it possible to change my subject options? Um, so if you wanted to change the one you chose in the two option columns, the answer there would be, yes, that would be fine, but we would like some notice of that, um, at least probably a week's notice so that we can prepare the timetables for the day and the papers. So that is possible. So don't feel like you're completely locked in there. And I happen to know that um, by experience, often it's difficult because you may have two or even three subjects in one of those option columns that you feel quite strongly about. Well, it, it is difficult to pick your favorite or the one you think you can perform best in, but you, I guess you have to do that. Um, Yes, the past papers, I think. Oh, I've got another question here. Um, oh, thank you from, for our chat out there. Usually how many academic scholars will be granted every year? Well, that's a great question. We do, we can vary it in some senses, depending on um, who applies and the, and the quality. But as a general rule, I think we have three academic scholarships and th three or four um, exhibitions. So in effect, uh, for example, this year I have seven FY, that's 13 plus scholars who've entered the college. So this is seven pupils who have, who have been successfully presented with awards. Um, so that's a pretty standard uh, number, about seven would be my short answer for that. Um, some might be called a formal academic scholarship and others are called an exhibition. They're both academic, they're just, I guess, different levels there. Um, so yeah, seven is who we have at the moment. Thanks for that question. Um, just looking out there, if there are any other questions coming in through the Q&A. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, oh, here's a question. Would I have any commitments as a scholar and how much time would that add to my normal school week? Uh, that's another great question. Again, I hope I've tried to address that by saying the flexibility uh, in, the, in the way we do it. There's as much or as little. Having said that, one of our roles in our pastoral role is to keep an eye on the scholars to make sure they're not overbearing or sorry, overdoing it or they're not overburdened. And that's really important to get that balance right. And that's one of the benefits of our program. And I think the care that Morgan's so famous for. 
which is we do really look after each individual pupil. And so that would be up to them by negotiation. Having said that, there is that minimum uh, level of commitment. If you are appointed a scholar, we do expect some that level of responsibility for you to be a leader in the college as well. We would expect scholars to have joined some of the super curriculum clubs that we have. We have academic clubs, um, might be literature society or robotics club. And there's the Aston Society, which is the lower school academic um, or club as well. So we would expect um, scholars, but we would hope that they would want to. And in fact, one would hope that they would start leading those uh, and stepping up for positions in those organisations. What we call here more than the super curriculum, which is the academic extension program there that any people can join at any time. Uh, again, I, part of that answer is that we like the students to lead. We do like our pupils to lead those clubs and societies and those super curriculum activities and to take on that, to be challenged, yeah, and to be stretched. One would hope there's not a boring moment at Malvern. Uh, I think if you asked our pupils, they would certainly tell you that. Right, okay, so hopefully that's answered that question. Um, are there any other questions out there? I, I think we've got about five minutes, I think. So if we need it, are there any other questions either from the Q&A box or the chat column out there? And now I'm sorry if you're, if you're calling out to the screen, um, I'm afraid I can't hear you because of the technology. So you, you have to type it in. Um, let's have a look, any, anything else out there? Um, I think I've given advice on the interviews. Uh, here's a question. Am I at a disadvantage if I'm not a British student when applying for an academic scholarship? And the answer is no, definitely not at all, no disadvantage. We are happy to enable pupils to sit the CAT4 tests um, alongside the scholarship papers, that's fine. And we would also do an interview uh, and some team prop, that, that problem as well, that solve, problem solving task, that would be fine as well, even if you're not from the UK education system. So no, the answer is you needn't fear that you'll be disadvantaged there. And I hope from today's presentations, you've got a sense that we are genuinely after the individual. We are looking to find out what you are capable of and what your interests and skills and gifts are. So we would not want to disadvantage anyone in that sense. I hope that's helpful. Okay, I'm just waiting to see if there's anything else coming in. Um, last chance. All right, this is really rather strange that we can't speak face to face and we can't talk to each other either. I hope though, nonetheless, I've given you a sense of what's happening on those two days. So if you make your application, which I encourage you strongly to do, uh, and thank you so much for your interest in Melbourne. I think um, that's very wise and exciting. Uh, make your application. If you come on the scholarship days, um, you've got a sense of what will happen. There's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, quite the opposite. They're an exciting couple of days, but a chance for you to really show us who you are. And then, of course, a sense that if you are successful in gaining a scholarship at Melbourne, an academic scholarship, the 13 plus scholarships, then you, a sense of what lies ahead of you, the exciting opportunities, real challenges, real excitement, but real opportunity for you to follow your strengths and gifts and to be guided and led and at the same time supported. Um, so I hope that was really helpful. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, it is a bit strange doing this online, but we appreciate your interest very much. And um, if you have any other questions that pop up yeah, in the future, just direct them into the college, that's fine, into admissions, uh, and we will be able to respond to you and respond to that if it comes up. Otherwise, I hope to see you. I hope to see you at the scholarship days. Best of luck. And um, thank you so much for your interest.